Welcome to KJV Cafe, where we explore great truths from God's holy word in a simple, down-to-earth fashion. Romans 10:17 shows us where faith comes from. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Let's grow our faith together in the cafe today. Our program is hosted by Pastor Clark Covington and brought to you by Heartland Ministries. Grab your Bible and a hot cup of coffee or tea and join us now as we explore God's holy word. Thank you for joining me. Welcome to the cafe today. Pastor Clark Covington here with another message for you today on justification. That's a big word, justification. Maybe you've heard in preaching before, that we are justified by faith. Well, what does that mean exactly? And where is that in the Bible? Today, we're going to explore what it means to be justified by faith and not by works, Uh, specifically Romans 4, 4 through 5. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward, not reckoned of grace, but of debt. That was verse 4. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So what does that mean exactly? What are we going to take from that? Well, obviously here Paul is writing in the book of Romans about how we're justified and that when we try to justify ourselves before God with works, we are not um, going to be justified because we can't work our way uh, into any kind of relationship with God, right? Uh, And we, uh, it says here, now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt saying, God, you owe us something, right? Oh God, uh, you, we don't need your grace. We we've worked ourselves into some way or condition Uh, And remember, Paul was writing at this time uh, to people that were still following the law, Uh, Jews or uh, what would be called Judaizers as well, Uh, both those that believed in Christ and those that didn't, that still believed they were under the law. This was a very serious issue of the time. In fact, the early disciples, you remember uh, Peter, I think it was in the book of Acts, you know, he had not eaten any unclean meat and the Lord told him to eat. Uh, and it was a picture there for Peter to realize that, that God was calling, uh, all everyone to be saved, not just the Jews and that following the law was not going to save anybody. Amen. And so the disciples had a picture of that by following Christ. But Paul is the one here that reveals this truth. Uh, most certainly I would say in the word that we are not justified by our works and that we cannot follow any kind of law or program to get into heaven. And you would, uh, if you went and knocked on a few doors, amen, and asked, are you sure you're going to heaven? Some people may say, I don't know. Some people may say, uh, no, but some people may say yes. And you may say, well, how do you know? And they might say, well, I've tried to do good, or I've done more bad than good, or uh, I've given to so-and-so cause or whatever it is. I joined so-and-so church, right? It's always some kind of action. And what God's teaching us in his word here in Romans 4, 4 through 5, is this beautiful picture of believing, of just having faith and that being enough. What a beautiful picture that is to know that if we just believe, if we just believe the Lord and his word, and we believe on Jesus Christ, because we have to believe we weren't there. Amen. We can't pull up the replay, the video replay. Amen. Uh, We can't um, stream this thing. We can't uh, pull up the archive in the library of a newspaper. No, we can't do that. We have to trust God. We have his word, but at the end of the day, and we have many witnesses to explain what happened there. And the more you study the Bible, the more you realize the truth of uh, the crucifixion and the resurrection. You believe it, amen. There's a great movie, uh, and I can't think of the name of it now, um, about a reporter, a skeptic for the Boston Globe, I think it was, and he was very skeptical. He was an unbeliever, and he said, I'm going to prove that the uh, crucifixion never happened, the resurrection never happened. And as he investigated, guess what? He got saved, and he became a uh, a, 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 a follower of Christ, uh, and it's a great movie. I can't, again, think, um, 
uh, the case for Christ, I think is what it's called now that I think of it, case for Christ. And so that's an example of, look, we want to disprove, we want to do this and that, but at the end of the day, all we're called to do is believe. And once we believe, then we are justified in front of God. Let's look at Romans 4. Let's just look at Romans 4. We're just going to look at the first four or five verses here and then we'll see what it says. What shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, how he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. That's verse 3. Remember that verse there. Now to him that worketh is a reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. And so we see this very clear picture. If you're trying to get to heaven by works, it's not going to work. Excuse the pun, but it won't work. Amen. Uh, Works won't work. Uh, In fact, the only thing that will work is faith. And we see here in verse three of Romans four, for what saith the scripture? Well, anytime you see, anytime you see something that says what says the scriptures or thus says the scriptures or haven't you read something like that, um, where the Lord Jesus Christ might say, haven't you read or haven't you seen it's oftentimes referencing the Old Testament. So what I'll do is when I see this, I'll go back and research it. And so it says, for what saith the scripture, Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. And so I'll take that and I'll pop it into search engine. And guess what comes up? Uh, we get a scripture here that explains that scripture. And that's Genesis 15. And we'll look in Genesis 15, one through six, where Abraham did believe God and it was counted unto him as righteousness. At Genesis 15, one through six, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision. Remember, Abram, uh, was, he's still called Abram. It wasn't Abraham yet. God hadn't changed his name yet. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision saying, fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Amen. And Abram said, Lord God, what will thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And so uh, Abraham's in a, or Abram at that time was in a conversation here with God about this reward, and he didn't have any children. And back then, as it is today, it's a big deal to have children, and it's a great reward to have children. And he's saying, I don't have any children. How are you going to bless me? Verse three, and Abram said, behold, to me, thou hast given no seed and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him saying, this shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. So verse four is referencing Isaac. And he brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. Verse five, ask anybody that studies um, astronomy and they could tell you there's countless stars, limitless stars. And that's what God is saying here, uh, that his Abraham's seed will be limitless, countless. And then verse six, and he, this Abraham, believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. So Abraham is barren. He does not have children. He has not been able to have his own uh, children with Sarah and he is getting up in age. And he's going to be a hundred before he has a child. And that's improbable back then as it is now. If you, uh, your neighbor called and said, uh, Hey, look, I have a hundred year old, uh, grandpa and that hundred year old grandpa is going to have a child soon. Uh, would you believe them? You would fall out of your chair, but Abraham believed. And then we see here, he believed uh, verse six of Genesis 15, he believed in the Lord and he counted it. He, as in God, counted it to him as an Abram for righteousness. And so that's what Romans four is referencing, that, that Abram's belief in what God was going to do, the miraculous, it was counted to Abram as righteousness. And so what does that mean to you? It means it's not what you do, it's what you believe. Now that can be a big burden, And it also can be a big blessing. It can be a big burden in the sense that we often want to be in control. We want a list of list of tasks and say, okay, we do one, two, and three, then we are going to be good to go. And if we don't, then we're not. And we want something to do to be in control. And it can be a burden to say, oh, all I have to do is believe. Oh, that's so hard, right? But then on the other end of it, if we do believe, if we just say, God, we believe, and we don't uh, look to earn favor with God through our works, if we just believe, that ironically is what earns favor from God. It's accounted to us 
as righteousness. And so we are justified by faith. So the entire idea of being justified or the idea of justification is simply this idea of believing what God has told us through his word of truly believing it, right? And understanding that that's all we can do and that's all we have to do. And there's a lot of other principles behind that, like the idea that man is sinful. So we're sinful. We can't be righteous on our own. Uh, The Bible speaks of our righteousness being like dirty rags, like a dirty gauze pad. So we are not uh, righteous on our own. We, we, the Bible also says we can do nothing good, uh, without God. And so we know that underpins it. But at the end of the day, if we understand that we're a sinner, we understand that we're saved by grace. It's just believing that justifies us. But you may ask, what exactly do you need to believe? Well, you have to believe in Jesus Christ. And this is by God's design that he wants you to believe in Jesus Christ and what Jesus Christ did. And what did he do? Well, he came to earth. He was born of a virgin. That's miraculous. So you have to believe that Mary was a virgin and that she was uh, given Jesus in the womb by God himself, not by man. It was not, he, uh, Jesus was not conceived by earthly man. And then that also underpins the idea that there was no uh, father, but God, amen, in the picture that uh, Joseph was the adoptive father, so to speak, right? And so we have to believe that Jesus was miraculously born, that he walked this earth, that he lived, that he had this earthly ministry, uh, and that he was crucified on the cross, that he willingly gave himself up, and he was crucified on the cross for the sin of mankind, for the sin of mankind. And people, uh, they don't love that. They don't love the shedding of blood. They don't love the idea of talking about the blood because that gets into the idea of a substitutionary death. And I've got some messages coming up on that. But the idea real quickly here is that Jesus took our place so that we were made righteous only by him because he was sinless. And us being sinners, we needed someone to take our place for that perfect sacrifice. And you say, well, why? Where did that start? That started the Garden of Eden, did it not? Uh, Sin entered the picture. This is called the original sin entered the picture when Eve and Adam, Adam and Eve, however you want to look at it, ate of the forbidden fruit. Once they did that, well, why did they do that? Because they wanted to be like God. And why did they get that idea? Well, the devil tricked them, amen, the serpent. And so you have this uh, situation take place, which is very supernatural, isn't it? Very miraculous in, in and of itself, take place in the Garden of Eden. And that's when sin enters the world, right? And this is where we get the idea that Paul actually compares um, Adam and Jesus, because you have the first Adam, the one where sin entered the world. And then you have the last Adam where Jesus died on the cross to pay that sin debt for all mankind. And that payment has been made. It's already done. What we need to do is believe on Jesus for our salvation. And when we believe on on what he did on the cross and we believe that he was resurrected miraculously uh, from the grave by who? By the Father, by Father God, right? When we do that, that's when we're saved. And that's when we get the Holy Spirit. So you look at it, you got God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That explains the Holy Trinity. God the Father sent God the Son. That's Jesus. That's why it says that in John three sixteen that he gave his only begotten Son, right? That's Jesus, to die for our sins. And we accept Jesus as Savior because he took, took on that brutal death, the death that was worse than any death ever in the history of mankind. When he took it on, we then... Uh, believe on him and his resurrection when God raised him from the dead and we have the Holy Spirit. That is the Holy Trinity in a nutshell. But the thing to remember today is that we are justified by faith. We are justified by faith. All we have to do is believe what I just explained and we're saved and we're set free and our works won't save us. Uh, Nothing else will save us but faith. We are justified by faith. And thank you so much for listening. I wish I had more time, but I don't. Take care. God bless. Amen. Thanks for listening to this episode of KJV Cafe. Have a question for Pastor Clark? Email him directly at clark at enduringpromise.org or visit kjvcafe.com and click the envelope button on the homepage. Our program is hosted by Pastor Clark Covington and brought to you by Heartland Ministries. We'll close today with Psalm 119, verses 166 through 168. Lord, I have hoped for thy salvation and done thy commandments. 
commandments. My soul hath kept thy testimonies, and I love them exceedingly. I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies, for all my ways are before thee.